Welcome back. The Eco Electricity Distribution Company, one of the dominant electricity service providers, says it has taken every necessary step to improve power supply within its catchment area. Those assurances were made at the Consumer Forum held in Lagos and hosted by the company. The meeting also had in attendance the sector regulators and the chief executive of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. A correspondent, Olu Phillips, reports. Nigeria's power industry is a unique one, a completely different model from what runs elsewhere in the world. As has been observed, electricity supply and all the market indices associated with it is fast becoming a very touchy agenda, but engagement must continue. When some of the customers... On this occasion, the service provider, a co-distribution company, and its customers are in one room under the watchful eye of the newly constituted Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. They are seeking ways to improve relationship between the two parties. If consumers are dissatisfied and aggravated, something is wrong. And so it doesn't seem like we're heaping the blames. That thing that is wrong is not entirely with the service provider. Those words opened the floodgates of concerns by the consumers, which in turn received responses from this side of the table. But it's still energy in my estate. When we complain, the people, they are so, uh, they, they don't want to talk about it. They are ready. The police will want the backing of them. These are people still in the city. Let's deal with them. Embed, the people that give me the bill to pay, are also dragging us. MO, under TCN is also dragging, is a battle, 360 battle or battle all over. Because when they give us the invoice, they want us to pay everything. The MD of MBEC is telling you must pay everything. They give you the, the, the MO is insisting you must pay everything. Give us guarantee to cover everything. The customers are also saying, you must sell me all over. I get bills based on a dollar rate of about 305, but I collect money from you. Based on the dollar rate of 196. Arbitral estimated billing, energy theft, interruptions, and poor response time to faults dominated the day's discourse. In pursuance of its customer centric approach to service delivery, Eco Disco says it will continue to increase capacity despite a difficult operating environment. Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. Let's get more business news now. Here's Anne Mawudu. Thank you, Amarachi. Welcome to Business News. The federal government is expected to inaugurate the Board of Securities and Exchange Commission on June the 24th, and that's after four years that President Mohamed Buhari sacked the former board. According to a report by the news agency of Nigeria, the new SEC board, which will have a four-year tenure, is to be chaired by Mr. Olufemi Lijadu. Members of the new board will include two non-executive commissioners of the commission, Mr. Lamido Yuguda, Mrs. Rekia Ladi, and a representative of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Okoko Ekanem. The other members of the board include representative of the Central Bank, Mr. Alvin Okoko, Court Acting Director General of the Commission, Ms. Mary Uduk, and the Regulators Acting Executive Commissioner, Corporate Services, Mr. Henry Rowlands, and two other Executive Commissioners. The Central Bank of Nigeria has summoned all authorized currency dealers for a meeting to discuss developments in the foreign exchange market. The CBN, in a statement, says the meeting, which will be held in Lagos on the 4th of July, will engage the participants of latest developments in the foreign exchange market. It will also recommend proper solutions. Apart from authorized currency dealers, the representatives of Nigeria Customs Service, Standard Organization, and National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, are all expected at the gathering. South Africa's Reserve Bank is likely to cut interest rate within the third quarter of this year just to help boost the country's economy, and that's according to a poll released today by Reuters. Ten out of 18 economists predicted rates will be cut in one of two policy meetings between July and September this year, a substantial uptick in expectations 
a lower rate. The Reserve Bank left a repo rate unchanged at 6.75% in the month of May on concerns that easing inflation in the economy is believed to shrink in the first quarter, but it was not enough to trigger a rate cut. Meanwhile, the country's inflation is expected to average 4.5% this year and 5% in 2020, while growth is expected to accelerate to 1.4% next year. French telecoms giant Orange says that it expects the planned liberalization of Ethiopia's telecoms market taking shape next year. That's according to the company's chief financial officer, Raman Fernandez. Orange's executive also says that a split of the FU telecom between an infrastructure provider and telecom service provider was very unlikely, contradicting earlier reports. The company is one of the leading contenders seeking to benefit from the end of government-controlled telecoms monopoly pushed by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. The group, which competes with other major players in the region, such as Vodafone, controlled Vodacom, Airtel Africa, and South Africa's MTN, generated $5.9 billion in area last year. Well, it seems Friday is a lucky day for the stock market. The NSE's main index is making its second rebound in the last trading day for this week after a strong sell-off dominated in previous sessions. Akaite Afia has the details for us. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. After four days of consecutive profit-taking, the stock market recorded its second rebound in the month, with a moderate 0.29% rise in the main index and 49 billion naira recovery in total market value. The market's recovery in Friday's session was largely driven by price rally from key value stocks across four sectors of the NSC. While the consumer goods sector fell by 0.84% on sustained profit-taking in Nestle shares, Lafarge Africa is top among 23 gainers, up by 10%, as investors continue to react to its resilient first quarter released on Thursday, while Chams led a pack of 14 losers down by 8.82%. Overall volume of shares traded for the day increased by 33.61 million units from the previous session to 189.95 million units in more than 3,000 deals. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Akaita Afia. Thank you for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Mwaldo. I wish you a restful weekend ahead. It's back to you, Marachi. Thanks, Anne. That's going to wrap up of international news. Juliana Olaika is standing by with Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. The United States was armed and ready to launch military strikes against Iran before President Trump abruptly told his staff to stand down. On Twitter, he said, we were cocked and loaded to retaliate last night on three different sites. When I asked how many will die, 150 people, sir, was the answer from a general. Ten minutes before the strike, I stopped it. Not proportionate to shooting down an unmanned drone. I'm in no hurry. Our military is rebuilt, new and ready to go. Go. by far the best in the world. Video of wreckage said to be the down drone was shown on state TV. The head of the Revolutionary Guard says it proves the unmanned craft entered Iranian airspace. Tehran says two warnings were sent minutes before the hit, but no reply was received. Both sides have released conflicting images of the drone's location. The Pentagon maintains it was flying over international waters, while Iran claims it had strayed into its territory. Global airlines have also started rerouting flights to avoid Iran-controlled airspace over the Strait of Hormuz. The president may not intend to go to war here, but we're worried that he and the administration may bumble into a war. Dozens of people have been injured in Georgia after violent clashes with police. Thousands of protesters tried to storm parliament after a visiting Russian politician was allowed to chair an assembly session. Simon Pusey has more. They are scenes of total carnage. rioting outside the government building in Tbilisi. Around 240 people were injured. Seeing the violence up close, it's amazing it wasn't more. Police have been criticized for their response, but many of them were also in the firing line. The results were bloody. 
Even this TV reporter was injured. The day after the night before, and the wounds are still sore. <laughs> In a country which has cut all diplomatic ties with Russia, the violence all stemmed from this. A Russian MP taking the speaker's seat and addressing the parliament in Russian. It caused fury inside the chamber and anarchy outside. One of the protesters' demands has been met with the resignation of the Speaker of the House. Thousands of miles away, the Georgian president was visiting Belarus. She's since cut short her trip. Now there is a tense situation in Georgia, so I decided that I should definitely be there because when something happens in the country, the head of state should be in place. So I should leave and be with my nation. They are scenes few will forget. A sign that 11 years since the war ended, anti-Russian sentiment here is still high. Simon Pusey, Channels Television News. In Hong Kong, police are urging people to withdraw peacefully after another day of protests. Thousands surrounded the police headquarters to continue their campaign against a controversial extradition bill. Demonstrators are also demanding that the government drop all charges against those who were arrested during clashes last week. Five men who called themselves the Wolf Pack have been sentenced to 15 years in prison for gang raping a teenager in Spain. The Supreme Court overturned a previous sentence which had convicted them of a lesser charge of sexual assault. The case triggered mass protests and calls for a change in the law. The ruling follows appeals by both the victim and her attackers after a regional court sentenced them to nine years in jail. A British member of parliament has been suspended after he grabbed a protester by the neck at a black tie function. Mark Field, who's a foreign office minister, has apologised unreservedly and has referred himself to the cabinet office where there'll be an investigation. Greenpeace activists crashed the gathering to demand action on climate change. A fire has ripped through an oil refinery in Pennsylvania after a series of explosions. Emergency response crews battled to bring it under control, but said there were no reports of significant injuries. Voters in Mauritania head to the polls this weekend for the presidential elections. Six candidates are vying to replace President Mohamed Ould Abdelaziz, who stepped down after serving two five-year terms after taking power in a coup. And finally, India's Prime Minister is doing his bit to encourage good health. I urge you all to embrace yoga and make it an integral part of your daily routine. Narendra Modi joined tens of thousands of people performing various asanas or exercises to mark the fifth International Yoga Day. And that's your international news around the world in five.